Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to make a smart contract for minting NFTs on the Ethereum network. I've helped thousands of people launch their NFT collections on Solana, and now I'm gonna do the same for Ethereum. The process of writing and deploying smart contracts is definitely an intimidating task at first, but I'm gonna explain it in a simple way that will give you a good understanding of how it all works. In this tutorial, there's also nothing you need to download besides MetaMask, so that definitely simplifies things. I'm about to go over how to write the NFT minting smart contract, deploy it, and verify it on Etherscan. Let's get right into it. First things first, if you don't have MetaMask downloaded already, I'll leave a link in the description for you to download it. Once that's downloaded and it's all set up, you'll have this little icon up here in the top right, and when you click on it, it'll open up your wallet just like this. And that's how you know it's downloaded properly. So now we can close out of that and head over to Remix. I'll leave the link to Remix in the description of this video as well. It's remix.ethereum.org. This is basically an online IDE, which is something that compiles your code for you. So this is what we'll be using to write and compile our smart contract. On the left, you can see that there is a little file explorer systems. So there's a folder called contracts. We're going to click to open that and we see there's some sample ones in here already. We can go ahead and ignore those. I'm going to right click and make a new file. You can call this anything you want. I'm going to call it NFT, and then it has to end in .sol for solidity. Instead of watching me type out word for word all of this code, what I'm going to do is copy and paste chunks at a time and explain it to you. So the first chunk contains four lines. The first line is a license identifier. This will pretty much always be the same if it's an NFT smart contract, so we don't need to touch that at all or worry about the meaning of it. The second line just states which version of Solidity we are using. Since we're using 0.8.9, we're gonna to need to make sure that Remix also knows we're using that version. So you can just quickly head over to this, and you can see we're currently on compiler 0.8.7, so we're gonna switch it to 0.8.9. Now these next two lines are imports from other scripts online. These basically just contain a framework which makes it much easier to write these smart contracts. Now this next piece right here basically just says contract called NFT is ERC721 and ownable. So what this means is it's identifying what your contract is called. I just have it called NFT. You can name it whatever you want. And it is saying that is it is an ERC721 token and it is ownable. Most NFTs are ERC721 tokens and it is also what we've imported from here. So now that we've defined our contract, the rest of the code will be in these parentheses right here. So now we can paste the next chunk of code in here, and it's all gonna be underlined red until we paste the next chunk. So let's just ignore that for now. These are all variables, which we will be using later on in the rest of the code. So they each have a unique identifier, like max tokens and tokens reserved, and then a value. If they don't have a value already, like these two, that's okay. That just means they're gonna be defined later in the code. So we have max tokens set at 10,000, which means the max supply of our NFT collection will be 10,000. Tokens reserved equals five means when the smart contract is deployed, five will be minted to my wallet. The price is in way, so this will actually be 0.08 ETH, and max mint per transaction is 10. This means that you can mint one through 10 per transaction. Next we have is sale active. This will be true if the public sale is currently going on and false if it's not. The total supply we don't have to worry about and minted per wallet just keeps track of how many NFTs each wallet has minted. These last two we don't have to worry about either. So now we can paste in the next chunk of code which makes all the red lines go away. So this is a constructor and what this does is it will run all the code inside of it when the contract is deployed. So what this does is it creates the ERC721 token with a name and a symbol. You can set these to be whatever you want. The next line is setting the base URI of the NFT. This will be an IPFS link like this. So it's really important you set this to correct thing and you won't know what to put here until you've already uploaded all of your images and JSON files. Now this next piece here, it's a loop. So it takes how many tokens you have reserved and it will loop through and mint all of them. So we have five tokens reserved, so it will loop through and mint five times. And then it will set the total supply to equal tokens reserved. Since there will be five minted at the end of that, the total supply will now equal five. Now we're getting into the fun stuff. 
So if we paste in the next block of code, it is the mint function. So as you can see, it is a function called mint. And it takes in a number, we're gonna call it num tokens, which is short for number of tokens you want to mint. And next we have a bunch of require statements. So basically what these do is it requires the sale to be active. If it's not, then it will come up with an error message saying the sale is paused. This one requires the number of tokens you're minting to be less than or equal to the max mints per transaction, which we have set at 10. So if you try to mint more than 10 in one transaction, it will come up with an error message saying you can only mint a maximum of 10 NFTs per transaction. Now for the next one, message.sender is the address of whoever is calling the function. So if someone is trying to mint more than 10, which is the maximum amount you're allowed to mint per wallet, it will deny you and say you can only mint 10 per wallet. On this line, we're defining current total supply and making it equal to total supply. So we can have a temporary variable with the total supply and have the actual total supply. So now in the next require, we take the current total supply plus the number of tokens you're trying to mint has to be less than or equal to max tokens. So what this does is it requires that you are not going over the max tokens of 10,000. So if you, there's already 10,000 minted and you try to mint another, it will deny you. Now the last require statement just checks to see that you have the right amount of Ethereum to mint. So it takes the number of tokens you're trying to mint multiplied by the price has to be less than or equal to the amount of Ethereum you're putting in. So once the function has gone through all of these checks to make sure you're eligible to mint, then it will loop through all of the tokens you're trying to mint and mint them to your name. Once they are minted, the minted per wallet variable will update with the amount of tokens that you just minted and the total supply will update. So that's it for the mint function. Once you understand the basic variables, it becomes pretty easy to understand. Now we can paste in the next block of code. And these next ones will be owner only functions, which means only the person who deployed the contract will be able to call these functions. And the way we know that only the owner can call this function is by placing this only owner tag at the end of the function. So this function is called flip sale state. And basically what it does is if the sale is active, it will set it to inactive. And if it is inactive, it'll set it back to active. So by default, the sale will be inactive. So if you call this function, then the sale will be active and people will be able to mint. The next function is called set base URI and it takes a string called base URI and it sets the base URI variable, which we have right here and changes it to a new one. The most common use for this would be a late reveal NFT. Let's say all of our NFTs got minted and we want to change the image to the post reveal image. You just call this function with the new base URI and then it would change it automatically. Up next, we have the set price function, which takes in a number called price. So what this does is it'll set the price to a new price. So let's say I didn't want the price to be 0 0.08 Ethereum. I could call this function with the new price and it will change. This is useful if you wanna change the price at some point during your marketing phase, or if you have different prices for pre-sale and public sale, you'll be able to change them accordingly. Now we have an exciting function called withdraw all. When you call this function, it'll withdraw all the ETH from the smart contract and split it up into two wallets. This first line here grabs the ETH balance of the smart contract, and these next two lines split up this balance into two different ones. Right now I have it set to be 50-50, if I want it to be a bigger split, I could set it to 70, 30. Just make sure that it equals 100. These next two lines will transfer the ETH with their corresponding ratios to each wallet. So these wallets here are both set to my test wallet address. If you have yourself and a partner wanting to split up the ETH, then you would put your address here and your partner's there. And then this person would get 70% and this person would get 30. And the last piece of code we have here we can basically just ignore. It just tells the contract what to do with the base URI. And that's it, the code is now complete. All we have to do is deploy it and verify it on Etherscan. So in order to deploy it, make sure that you are on the correct version as it corresponds here. Then we can go over to this tab here and we're gonna set it to injected provider. Once you click that, a MetaMask window should appear asking you to connect your account and you will just have to go through there. 
As you can see right here, it says run the main network. Since I don't want to actually use a couple hundred dollars deploying the smart contract, I'm going to use a test network. The process is exactly the same for mainnet as it is for Rinkeby. The only difference is it doesn't deploy it to the actual blockchain, it deploys it to the test network. So if you're trying to deploy on the mainnet right now, don't switch it over to Rinkeby like I am. Now just make sure your contract is selected here and click deploy. It will bring up a MetaMask window. It'll tell you how much it'll cost with gas and you can confirm it. You'll have to wait a little bit and then once you see this, the contract is deployed. Now we can head over here and we can see our contract is right here. So if we drop this down, we can see all of our functions and we're actually able to call all these functions directly from here. This is really cool. So what we can do is we can see, okay, here's the price. What's the price? There it is. This is what we set our symbol as here. And let's see if the sale is active. The sale is not active, which means if we try to mint one NFT, it will come up with an error. The sale is paused. So everything is working correctly. The contract is deployed and now we have to verify it. So to do that, the first thing we're gonna have to do is flatten our smart contract. Basically what this does is instead of having these imports, it'll just put everything all into one file. So we can click this little plug in the bottom left here and search flattener. Now we can activate it. Now this little icon here has appeared, so we can go over here and flatten contracts nft.sol. So let's do that and then save it. Accept. And now it's opened a new file called nftflat.sol. So we're gonna highlight this whole thing and copy it. Now we can go to etherscan.io. Since I am doing this on testnet, I'm on rinkaby.etherscan.io. But if you're doing this on the main net, don't go to Rinkaby, just go to etherscan.io. So actually we're going to have to go back into Remix and we're going to click this to copy our contract address. And then we can search it in Etherscan. So this is our contract in Etherscan. We can go over to the contract page and click verify and publish. So this is our contract address. We can leave that as is. And now for the compiler type, we will do solidity single file. For compiler version, if you remember, we did 0.8.9. And for the open source license type, we will do MIT license and click continue. So now we just have to enter the contract code below, which is why we flattened it. So we can select all this and copy it and then paste it in here. Since we don't have any constructor arguments, we can just highlight all that and delete it. And all you have to do now is verify you are a human and publish. After a few seconds of waiting, you should see a success message. So now if we go back to our contract, we'll see we have this check mark. So now anyone can come here and see the code. They can read some of the functions here, like price and symbol and all this. And you can go over to write contract and now you can connect here and you can actually call functions from here. So let's test that out. I'm gonna connect my MetaMask wallet. Next, connect. So now we're connected. And if I try to mint, it won't work because the sale is not active. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip the sale state. As you can see here, all we have to do is confirm that transaction. And now that that transaction has gone through, the sale should be active. So if we go to mint, the mint price is 0.08 and we just want to mint one NFT. So we can go ahead and write that scroll down and click confirm. As we can see, this mint transaction has successfully gone through, so we can head over to OpenSea. I am on testnets.opensea.io instead of just opensea.io because I deployed my contract on the testnet. If you're on the main net, you will just go to opensea.io. So what we can do is copy our contract address and paste it in the search bar. As you can see, this is our NFT collection page. You can see, that five were minted because we set it to do that in our constructor argument. It mints all of our tokens reserved, which is five. So it has all five of those and then the sixth one, which we just minted. So now everything has been proven to work exactly as it should. Now you know exactly how to write an NFT minting smart contract, deploy it, and verify it on Etherscan.
I hope you were able to learn something new from this video, and if you weren't able to, please let me know in the comments how I can improve for next time. If you like this content, remember to check out my Twitter linked in the description and leave a like on the video. It helps my channel out a lot and lets me know what kind of videos you guys like to see. That's all for this video and I will see you in the next one.